Starting with the name of Almighty Allah, in this video we'll talk about methods of soil exploration. So this is one of the lectures of soil investigation series. So there are basically two techniques or two methods of soil exploration. One of them is non-destructive method and the second one is destructive method. Basically, there are numerous techniques that come under the regime of destructive methods and same is the case for non-destructive methods. So, non-destructive methods are also known as geophysical exploration techniques. And the number one technique is GPR, ground penetration radar technique. One is seismic surveys. And third one is electric resistivity surveys. Now, GPR, ground penetration radar technique, is a high resolution, high frequency, 10 megahertz to 1000 megahertz electromagnetic wave technique for imaging soils and ground structures. So basically, it is a non-destructive technique which is used to obtain the images of soils and ground structures without destroying the soil strata. How it works basically, an antenna is used to transmit and recover radar pulses generated by a pulse generator. The returned pulse is then processed to produce images of the soil profile. The key, ge the key geotechnical uses are soil profile imaging and location of buried objects. So GPR is used to obtain the soil profile imaging and location of buried objects. Here you can see in the left figure, you can see the antenna and display screen where the images or profile of the soil is obtained. The waves are processed from this generator to produce the soil images. Here you can see the antenna and here in the right figure you can see the soil stratigraphy or soil imaging or profile obtained from the GPR. So here you can see the details of soil stratigraphy that how the underneath soil is. The second one is seismic surveys. In seismic uh, surveys. Seismic surveys are of two types. One is reflection tests and the second one is refraction tests. In seismic reflection tests, the travel times of waves reflected from subsurface interfaces are measured by geophones. Again, this is a geophysical technique which uses waves which are generated by the equipment those waves travel through the interfaces of the soil. Then how it works, these waves are received back by geophones and geophones are motion sensitive transducers that convert ground motion to electric signals. The travel to depth size and shape of the interfaces. The angle of reflection of the waves is a function of material density contrast. Seismic reflection is used when high resolution of soil profile is required, especially at large depths up to 50 meters. So again, seismic reflection survey is carried out to obtain the high resolution of soil profile. Then the second technique is seismic refraction and seismic refraction surveys are very similar to seismic reflection surveys except that the refraction waves are measured and the source geophone is placed at a greater distance. The latter enables the recording of seismic waves that are primarily horizontal rather than vertical. In most refraction surveys only the initial P waves are recorded. 
the seismic refraction method is in method is used to determine the depth and thickness of soil profile and existence of buried structure here you can see the pictorial view of the soil profile obtained from seismic survey here you can see the soil shallow boring top of weathered limestone in boring and cavity in boring low velocity zones possibly indicating soil raveling or and or cavities in weathered limestone so where the where the velocity is high it means the density of the soil is high higher the velocity higher will be the density so here you can see this pattern that for the soft sand the velocities are in 300 feet per second to 1100 feet per second then for the weather limestone the velocities of the waves are ranges from 30 waves are ranges from 1300 to 2300 feet per second and similarly for limestone or hard strata these values are quite higher so from the motion of the waves generated from the equipment and are received back by the equipment or processed to produce the soil profile based on the density of the soil so this is how the seismic surveys work then the third technique of non-destructive methods is electric resistivity surveys so electrical resistivity measures measurements can be used for identification and quantification of depth of groundwater table detection of place and measurement of groundwater conductivity soil resistivity is measured in ohm centimeters varies with moisture content and temperature changes in general an increase in soil moisture results in a reduction in soil resistivity it's a very common phenomenon that whenever the moisture content is higher then the conduction of electricity will be higher and the resistance will be lower so there are other several techniques of non-destructive methods which can be used for the same purpose as mentioned earlier and one of them is gamma density or gamma gamma technique which measures electron density and can be used to estimate the total soil density or porosity then again neutron porosity measures hydrogen density it is used for porosity estimation below the groundwater level then sonic vdl measures this seismic velocity it is useful to measure soil stiffness and to detect bedrock elevation surface densities and is particularly good at detecting cavities a gravimeter is used at discrete points on the earth's surface to detect small changes in gravity these changes are called gravity anomalies and are related to density changes so these are several or various techniques which can be used for the soil investigation so these all methods are known as non-destructive methods or geophysical techniques so now what are the advantages and disadvantages of non-destructive or geophysical methods so in the first column you can see the geophysical methods first one is ground penetration radar seismic survey electrical resistance microgravity and what are the advantages of these methods so these are non-destructive methods the details can be obtained without destroying the soil strata then the second advantage obtained without destroying the soil strata then the second advantage is the methods are quick and these methods provide stratigraphy details of soil groundwater table and relative wetness then relatively inexpensive provide subsurface geologic information with which to plan the tiered soil investigation so these methods can be perform prior to the boring or drilling exploratory techniques of soil investigation so what are the disadvantages so no soil sample can be obtained so using geophysical methods you cannot obtain any soil sample you can obtain only limited design parameters 
site may not have enough real estate to conduct tests adequately. So much of the information is qualitative. is qualitative. So you obtain mostly the information uh, qualitative, not the quantitative most of the time. Then what are the destructive methods of soil investigation? So first one is trial pits or test pits. A pit is dug by hand using shovels or with a machine such as a backhoe. This method can provide excellent shallow depth soil stratigraphy. So these, this method can be used for a shallow depth soil stratigraphy. Then uh, another method is hand or power augers. This measures or uh, these are the tools used to quickly create a hole about 100 mm to 250 mm in diameter in the ground. You can inspect the soil and take undisturbed samples for the lab test as well. So this is one of the advantages of using hand or power over technique. Then comes the wash pouring in which the water is pumped through a hollow rod that may or may not be equipped with a drill bit to remove soil from a borehole. The washings can be used to estimate the soil types. Then comes the rotary rigs. These are mechanical devices used to drill boreholes, extract soil samples and facilitate in situ tests as well. And now again the advantages and disadvantages of destructive methods. And the first one is the test pits. The detailed has been discussed earlier. Now the advantages are this method is cost effective, provide detailed information on stratigraphy. Large quantities of disturbed soils are available for testing. Large blocks of undisturbed sample can also be obtained. Field tests can be conducted at the bottom of the pit. And then what are the disadvantages? Depth is limited to about 6 meter. Deep pits, uneconomical excavation below groundwater and into rock difficult and costly. Too many pits may scar site and require back fill soils. Then hand hours, cost effective, not dependent on terrain, portable, low, low headroom required, used in uncased holes, groundwater location can easily be identified and measured. So again, depth is limited to about six meter. This is one of the disadvantages of using handovers. Then labor intensive, undisturbed samples can be taken only for soft clay deposits, cannot be used in rocks or stiff clays, dry sand or power hours. Truck mounted and equipped with continuous that bore a hole 100 to 250 mm in diameter. So these are quick techniques used in uncased holes. Undisturbed samples can be obtained quite easily. Drilling mud not used. Groundwater location can easily be identified. Depth limited to about 16, 15 meter. A greater depth drilling becomes difficult and expensive. So it must be accessible to motorized vehicle. And then you can see the disadvantages and advantages of rotary drilling and wash boring as well. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about sampling. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and share. Thank you and Allah.